Good morning. I am Cecil and Blues. Thank you for joining me for this Wildstar Guide. Today we will be collecting the journals and data cubes found in the Exile Zone, Celestian. The first area you start in is Glenview's Bulwark, and we will find our first journal sitting on this table next to the Queen's Consort. It is labeled the Queen's Condition. Once you have collected this item, you will want to head out into the Ember Wood. There is a fallen tree, and you can find inside its trunk our first data cube. That data cube is labeled as Fascinating Flora. Next, inside the Western Ember Tree, on the mid-level, you will find a journal labeled Arborean Fables. The Ember Trees are part of a quest line, but you can access them even if you are not currently or have not completed the quest line. Our next journal is located in the northeastern ember tree and it is labeled vengeance of sesh kesh maybe there's nothing left to collect in this area of the map so moving forward into the green bow glen you will find on a hill a data cube labeled Forest Defenders. It is to the northeast of the city. From there, we'll want to head up the river to a small island at the base of the Celestial Falls. This is to the west slash northwest of the city there. This journal entry is labeled When I Walk Beyond the Weave. Now if you swim north a little ways and climb up onto this rock, you will find a data cube that is labeled Totemic Power. We'll show you where that is exactly on the map. Now we can make a brief stop. If you uh, just look at the base of the falls, you'll find a small cave to the left side of the falls. And we'll show you where that is on the map. This is a hidden area. You will find your hidden cache here, uh, but I'm going to cut it off a little bit short so that you can kind of experience what's inside for yourself. Next, we're gonna climb to the top of the Celestial Falls and you will find a data cube labeled Primal Matrix. Kind of sitting on this flooded Elden statue. Nearby in the Thistlewood Thicket, almost on the complete west side of the map, near this uh, statue, tree, altar kind of thing, you will find a journal labeled Offering to the Light Keeper. Just to the south of that area, although uh, you will have to kind of go around, you will find the Pollenberry Grove. In the far south of the Pollenberry Grove, you will find a Dominion outpost, and among the things there, you will find a journal labeled Operation Stinger Status Report.
still located in the Pollenberry Grove, more in the center. Uh, there is a giant tree, and we are underneath that tree. You will find, this time, a data cube that is labeled Insect Aggression. Our next stop is in the Bone Razor Village. This is in the far southwest of the map. And we are looking for a journal entry labeled Dish Network Protocols. It is sitting on the control panels of one of the radar dish networks in the village. Inside the Dark Loam Hollow, which, even though uh, our map doesn't fully function because we are underground, you can see uh, that uh, we are in Dark Loam Village and we are underneath it. You can use the mini-map to spot where this data cube is exactly. Uh, we should then move forward to Hijunga Village. This is the Lop Village. And our first pickup here is the LOP Combat Techniques journal entry. And this is located on the platform that is behind the combat dummies. We have a second journal entry, also in Hijunga Village. A uh, slightly different position in the town. We'll zoom in and take a look at where that is. This journal entry is sitting just to the left of the bounty board and is labeled lollygagging. Next, we're going to head to Sylvan Glade and go inside the Explorer's Union. Once again, we're indoors, so our map doesn't function perfectly well. Uh, but you will find among uh, the variety of things inside the Explorer's Union, a Explorer's Union handbook. Also in Sylvan Glade, on the east side of town, you will find a building that, when you go inside it, is labeled The Forge. Inside this building, you will find a journal entry labeled A New Arborea. A small footnote on this item, currently it is listed as being part of the Gallerus Collections. But I believe that is an error, and hopefully it should be corrected by uh, the time you are playing this at launch. Next, uh, still in Sylvan Glade, kind of in the center of town, there is a data cube. It's up the tree a little bit, but there's not a challenging jumping puzzle or anything in your way. And it is labeled Silent Ignorance. Pressing forward, we will wind up at Junction Zeta. There is a Makari spy camp to the south of town. And outside of the Zeta bunker, there is a giant gun. And there's a data cube next to that gun, titled Violent Application. From there, we want to head inside the Junction Zeta Bunker. You can use the mini-map to kind of identify where I am standing. If you need it, it's not an incredibly large location. But uh, we are looking for the Junction Zeta Status Report. Next, if you are moving forward with the quest line, you will eventually be sent to Camp Viridian, located here on the map. There is a teleporter in that area that leads to the Augmentation Chamber. Once inside the Augmentation Chamber, you will find a data cube labeled Modified Clones. Next, we'll be heading into the Exocyte N22. And right when we enter, we should locate uh, a weapon that actually starts a quest. And right next to that weapon that starts a quest is a book labeled Arov's Goop GAQ. And 
And we'll take one of the teleporters in this area. Uh, there are two. The first one leads into the Nanite Repository. And we are looking for a data cube labeled Omniplasmic Control. In addition to being a collection item for your lore in the area, this also completes an achievement. Uh, secondly, you will want to enter the N22 Essential Reactor Room. And we are looking for a data cube labeled System Fractures. It's a little heavily guarded, you may have to in, uh, do some combat in order to uh, get to it. Before you leave the area, there is a museum item, uh, kind of to the uh, southwest of the uh, N22 site. It's behind a world boss. So if uh, he's not spawned or currently involved in combat, you can just walk by uh, and pick this up. When you activate the quest, you will get a call from Dorian Walker, and he'll ask you to deliver that to him uh, in the capital city. There is one of these in every single zone. Next, we're going to head to the Dark Whisper Enclave. This is part of the city. It is to the west, uh, the west end of Sylvan Glade. And we pick up our first part of the Fall of Grismara. Uh, questing to the uh, northwest of the, or just straight west, I guess, I apologize, of our last questing hub, you will find Sword Maiden Hill. Sword Stone Hill, and you will find a journal entry that is labeled Divine Secrets of the Torian Sisterhood. Boy, I should probably stick to my notes if I don't want to make mistakes like that in the future. What do you say? Next, we're going to head up to the Rushing Glen, and you will find on a small island in the middle of a pond a data cube labeled Savage Beauty. From there, we are heading to the Horizon Plateau. It's at the top of a mountain. You are sent up here as part of a quest. I'm fairly certain this journal will be here one way or another, but you may have to be a part of the quest line in order to make it spawn, uh, because the uh, NPC may not be here. Next, the Vibrant Ascent. There is a data cube located where I am on the map, labeled Pure Source. From there, we're going inside the Heart of the Godwood. You must be doing this, this quest series, otherwise you will not be able to enter the Heart of the Godwood. It is a questing area. It remains open after you've completed the quest series, so if you had gone through this zone and missed these items, it's okay, you can come back for them. Uh, but the first is the Blade Mother's Song, and then at the very bottom of the Heart of the Godwood, you will find a data cube labeled Collective Life Force. Next, we're heading to the Bellabog Containment Camp. And we'll find the second piece of the Fall of Grismara entry. From there, we're heading into the Grim Hold Quarantine Sector. You will need a quarantine suit in order to not die in this area. Uh, in case you're not currently questing in the area, uh, you may not be handed one by NPCs. Uh, but our first uh, data entry here is Dr. Drucker's 100% Pure Vitalis Supplement Solution. Uh, moving forward... Uh, and then backwards, you you use a pipe. I, I'm, I'll, I'll pan around the camera to kind of show how I climbed up here. Uh, and we are in Sector 1, and we are collecting a data cube labeled Undeniable Foreboding. Then we will head into the Grimhold Quarantine Sector 3, 
and you should be able to locate where I am indicating on the map the Fall of Grismara Part 3. Our very last item is located near the back of District Falls, and it is a data cube labeled Parameters Exceeded. And that should be all of the entries for this zone. If you found this guide helpful, then go ahead, hit the like button. Uh, it helps out my channel quite a bit. If you're looking for more Wildstar guide or more Wildstar content, you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That way you'll be notified when I put new videos up. You can also follow me on Twitter at It's Boats. And you can keep an eye on my Twitch page, Cecil and Blues. After launch, I am possibly going to be streaming a significant amount of my leveling uh, and possibly exploration. It all depends on what I uh, have to record. I appreciate that you've tuned in today, and I hope that you have a great day.